Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on our AVRC tutorials, we're going to be talking about using the ADC, the Analog to Digital Converter, on the ATmega328. And to accomplish this, we're going to be using the code from last time, the um, PWM code, which we use to control the brightness of this LED, and a little trimming pot I have here, which we're going to set up as a voltage divider. So we'll just put that into the board, like so, there we go. And then we're going to take two of these leads, one going to ground, which I'll plug into the blue rail, and one going to power, which we'll plug into the red rail. doesn't matter what order you plug these into, as long as one goes to power and the other goes to ground. And then the last one we have, we'll plug into the back, the wiper pin, and that will go to pin 28 on the chip. That's the, I know this is getting a little crowded with all these wires now, but yeah, it's all the way up on the right hand side, pin number 28. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to write, uh, write code so that when we adjust the value of the potentiometer, it'll adjust the brightness of the LED. Okay, so I've got the pin diagram open for the ATmega328P. Uh, remember that we connect the wiper pin on the potentiometer to pin 28, which is right here. Uh, this is PC5, port C, pin 5. And as you can see right here, it is ADC5. That is one of the six analog to digital converters which are connected to pins on the external chip. Uh, I am just chose ADC5 randomly. It's just easy to access pin, nice and easy. Uh, so if we scroll on down here to the analog to digital converter, you can see what we have to set up for the ADC. Now, for the ADC to work, you have to set something called the reference voltage. Uh, the reference voltage being what it uh, creates a binary value in reference to the analog signal you're putting in. It's the supply, so everything will be a ratio of that reference voltage. So if you put in a 5 volt reference voltage, it'll be from 0 to 5 volts. If you put in a 1 volt, it'll be from 0 to 1 volt. Easy enough. Uh, they give you the calculation, oh, stop scrolling, right here for the ADC value, which is ADC is the VN times 1024. This is a 10-bit analog to digital converter, so that's something we'll deal with in a little bit over the VREF, and so you can move some variables around to get what your input voltage is from a given ADC value. So we're only going to be dealing with the external uh, ADC pins. Uh, there are some internal ones. The uh, ATmega328P actually has an onboard temperature sensor which you can read based upon the analog pin it has connected to it, but we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to deal with analog pin 5. Okay, so the first register we're going to deal with, well actually before we deal with the registers we need to clean up a bit of our code. Uh, I've just created a new Thing with the old PWM code. We're just going to clear some of these things out. We don't need the delay code anymore. Uh, we're going to get rid of this temporarily. And we can get rid of the thing in the while loop. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, everything else we can leave. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the first register, the ADMUX register. The ADMUX register has two things we need to take care of. It, this will set the reference voltage, and it'll set the pin we are checking the analog voltage on. Uh, the reference voltage, there are, as you can see, four settings. Uh, the A ref pin, which is a pin on the chip, where you plug in whatever reference voltage you want. Uh, the AVCC, which is VCC in our case, which is 5 volts. Reserved, don't worry about that, and the internal 1.1 voltage reference, which I believe is used solely with the temperature sensor, but we're not dealing with that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just deal with the AVCC with the external capacitor at the AREF pin. I'm going to leave off that external capacitor. I know that's going to theoretically screw with our data, but I'm just going to leave it off because I don't have a capacitor lying around at the moment. So let's go ahead and put that in. I'm going to define a separate function because I've got the timer stuff and I didn't think ahead to put that in a separate function. So we'll just define a separate function here, void setup, 
the ADC. Don't need that there. We'll start with AD mux equals one shifted left into, we want to use the AVCC. So that's ref zero. Nope, that's the wrong one. Refs zero. And now we select the pin. Uh, we're using ADC5. So if we scroll down a little bit more, we see all the other ADCs you have to choose from. But we just want ADC5, which works by setting MUX0 and MUX2 true. So we'll just go ahead into our code. So OR, one shifted left to MUX0, MUX0, or one shifted left into MUX2. And so that sets up the AD mux. All right, now the next register we deal with is the ADC SRA, which is the control status register for the ADC. Like um, timers and PWM for this, we're going to be using interrupts to handle the messy bits, so we don't have to constantly check to see if our ADC conversion is done. ADC, ADC converter conversion. That might be a little redundant. So this is the register where we set up that interrupt and where we control the ADC. There are a couple modes you can run the ADC in, one of which is free running mode, which will, get, which will keep running the converter over and over and over again. We're, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the, don't actually know the name for it off the top of my head, but um, it, you start a conversion, it finishes the conversion, and then we'll start it again manually. We'll have to put in some code to say, enable the ADC again. We'll get to that in just a little bit. So the first thing we're going to have to enable is the ADC enable, which will turn on the analog to digital converter. So in the ADC SRA, equals one shifted left into the enable bit. And then we're also going to turn on, did I scroll too far? I did. We're also going to, where is it? There it is. The ADIE, the ADC interrupt enable, which will make this an interrupt trip every time it converts, it finishes its conversion. So one shifted left into the ADIE. And then the last one we're going to deal with is the prescaler. The prescaler is going to divide the system clock into the input clock for the ADC. The ADC actually has to run on a clock so that everything steps in time. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on to the uh, 128 division because the 128 division works pretty well for me and I think it should work well for you. You Feel free to change these values. I just know that this one works reliably. We're all about reliability. So one shifted left into ADPS. 0 into ADPS1 and finally 1 into ADPS2. And I put a space there. There we go. Okay, so this pretty much sets up the ADC. We're going to create one more function void start conversion which will start the actual conversion for the ADC and that works by setting the ADC SRA is uh, one into the ADSC bit in the ADC SRA register. So if we scroll back up, you just write that to one and it starts the conversion. Once the interrupt is thrown, it clears that and we'll have to start it again. Okay. This is a little something I have to talk about. Uh, the Adlar bit. Uh, this just sets the order of the ADC final output value. Remember that the this is a 10-bit ADC, which, because we're using something that relies on an 8-bit system, it's going to overflow a bit. So it actually requires two registers. So it eats up one entire 8-bit register and then two bits of another. You can access the entire thing with just a the ADC variable, which we're going to do. But what Adlar does is it shifts it one way or another. So with Adlar 0, which we're going to leave at 0, 
it leaves the first six bits of the higher register zero, and then it writes in all the other bits. Adlar one shifts it those six bits to the left, and then leads the leaves the last six bits of the lower register zero. So we're just going to deal with Adlar one or Adlar zero. So you don't have to change anything. Okay, these you don't have to worry about because we're dealing with um, we're setting it manually. The ADC SRB, the control register status B is just for controlling how the free running mode is going to be triggered. Don't have to worry about that. Last thing we're going to do is disable the input buffer, the, the digital input buffer for uh, the specific pin. Remember that because this is an actual pin, you it has a digital input buffer. What this lets you do is disable the digital input layer. You don't have to do this. I prefer to do this so that I don't get logic values so everything's running okay and I don't accidentally try and read it and get a weird value so last thing I'm going to set in this is the ditter 0 ADC5 where is it there we go. DIDR0 equals one shift left into ADC5 D yeah so that'll disable the input the digital input buffer to that. Okay, so that's the setup done. Let's put these... Actually, after the setup, I'm going to say start conversion. Now, up here, I'm going to say set up the ADC right before the set external interrupt. And now we're going to just have to deal with the interrupt. So the vector for the ADC conversion complete in, uh, vector is ADC underscore vect. Pretty easy. Now in this we're going to say that the duty cycle, remember that we are going to change the brightness of that LED, which we do by adjusting the duty cycle, is going to be equivalent to the ADC value. And then we're just going to, like I said, we have to restart the conversion after it's cleared. So everything's good. And that is it. So if I compile this, everything should be just perfect. Okay, so we'll go ahead and upload this to the board and see what it... Oh, wait, nope. Before we do that, one thing we have to clear. This. This has to go away. The reason... Uh, let me put that back. The reason I'm taking out this bit of math and just replacing it with the sole variable duty cycle is because... Remember, we had it set to a percentage in the PWM example. This time it's just going to be set from 0 to 255 because that's the only value we can extract from the ADC. We're not going to extract a percentage. We're going to extract some 8-bit value. Or, well, we're going to extract a 10-bit value, but the OCR0A is only going to read 8 bits of it. So we're just going to replace that with the sole variable duty cycle. We'll try that again. Everything's good. We'll upload this and see what it does. Okay, so downloaded it to the board. I'm going to turn off the light so you can see the LED in all its glowing splendor. And as I adjust the value of the potentiometer in the proper direction, you can see it gets whoop, dim up. So it starts out very dim, and I can get it brighter. But if I spin it all the way around, you'll notice it gets dimmer, and then it gets brighter all of a sudden, dimmer, brighter, dimmer, brighter. That's because we had the ADC variable is, remember, 10 bits. Uh, the timer is only 8 bits, so that's an extra 2 bits, and you can get 4 possibilities out of 2 bits. So if I take this all the way back to the beginning, and I spin it up, you'll see it get bright and then turn off 4 times. So, come on. One, two, I really spin it, three, there it is, and one more, four. And if I take it back, one, two, three, four, if I could get my wrist around, there we go. So that's that extra two bits. But that is reading the ADC value of the, or getting an ADC value from the ATmega 328P in AVRC. So, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.